everyone, my name is Irene and welcome to my channel Leafing Around where we talk all about tropical plants and gardens. In this episode, I'm really excited to bring you with me to a tour of a private garden in Kuching. Kuching is a little town in the state of Sarawak that's on the island of Borneo belonging to Malaysia. And I've known the owner since about 20 years ago but I never knew he had such an extensive collection. And um, this home is very special, not just because of the individual plants that he has, but also how he has organized and arranged them in a truly artistic way that I hope will give you some great ideas for your own home and garden. So let's get started. First up is this huge Philodendron biliatia. This is a size that I've rarely seen and it's just so magnificent. This is sitting in bright and direct light and I don't know if you could see but it's, it's huge. The whole plant has, I don't know, it looks like it's got about 15 leaves or so. So lush. And I want us to move over there next. This thing really caught my eye as I walked in. Set on two sets of ladders here are all the air plants. And I thought, what a clever way to organize and arrange your air plants in a way that is so visually attractive. So I'm definitely gonna try copy this idea when I get home. Um, if you come a little bit more close up, you can appreciate that the wood that is used is quite aged. And so I think this gives it a nice spe special charm to it. So I think, you know, ladders should be pretty easy to make if you can get hold of some old woods. Why not try this idea? And now I'll take you with me to the side yard. You see this beautiful Talansia air plant and he's also got this huge stack horn. This is the Platycerium coronarium. And then here, there's a statue here. It looks like a Balini statue. And then right beside here, you could see this beautiful lush fern. These ferns are actually quite common, but they make a beautiful landscape piece. I always feel ferns really, really makes a garden more graceful because of the way that it drapes. It's just so, so graceful. Next, let's move on. Ah, we see here a whole collection of Heliconia. And if you could see here, this is the Heliconia. They call it the sexy pink. This is the only pink Heliconia that I know of. I'm not sure why. I have very little success with it myself. Um, there is a different one that's here. If you could see. This is really, really bright red, like a deep maroon red. I'm really curious what the name is. If you do know what it is, please feel free to drop a comment at the box below. Um, what else have we got? We have some begonias here. I would wonder if you could see. This is a really huge leaf. I forgot the name. Is it Popoeneoa? Ah, I'm very bad at pronouncing or remembering names. This one is an aglonema, kind of a silverish, bluish tinge to it. Very nice. It's even got variegation. If you come closer to have a look, so that's the grayish, bluish tinge with some variegation. Such an exciting find. Guys, I nearly missed this. This was just right beside the fern I was pointing out to you. But as you all know, this is the Monstera Borsigiana Albo. And what a beautiful piece this one is. Look at it. So many leaves here are like a half moon. So beautifully variegated. And looks like they have stuck it on. It's not quite a moss pole. It's a moss pole to start off with. But then this one is a fern tree trunk. So I think a dead fern tree trunk could be a very good pole for it to climb to. Because um, as you know, a lot of people use fern tree bark as a substrate. And then what's better than that an actual fern tree trunk for the plants to climb on. Now, let's proceed to the backyard because the backyard is where all the gems are. And before we even do that, I want to point out to you this beautiful 
green color it's like a jade color ventilation block um, I think this has got a Chinese or Nonya heritage I tried to look for it too but I actually couldn't find them so they are a real heritage antique piece and it's just so beautiful to have them combined together with these wood tissue please is hot guys filming in Malaysia is really really hot I'm sweating all over okay let's <laughs> proceed first Look at these guys, these are a huge specimen of Okay, this is definitely the Anthurium vichii And it's very very rare that we see them this size I don't know if you could appreciate the size This is like, well, I think at least 2 feet long Wow And then this here um, I think this could be the Esmeraldense um, I'm trying to think, is this a Philodendron? Yes, I think this is the Philodendron Esmeraldense Mine is just this tiny, but this one is huge, look at it guys Wow, and oh, we were admiring the air plants outside, but this is even a bigger one And. I don't know if you could see all these things that's hanging on top of me These are like, I think you call it cow bells These are really charming Wind chimes of sort Oh, I just realized what's in front of me And you guys have been appreciating this view all this time This here is such a beautiful recreation of the jungle We have here a few fern trees up here we have the orchids and I think much more even without any blooms the roots here are just so beautiful by itself and then this is combined with a hooperzia that I've actually not seen and then down here we're starting to see begonias and ferns these are so beautifully combined together so guys if I think you have orchids or hooperzias and ferns these things they look very good together and then behind here if you see the pots at the back you could see even more hooperzias the one that's there and then the one on the right um, I think that is Hooperzia Lin Linyami. Okay, I won't even try to name them because I can't remember the names. But the point is, there are various types and the form is very similar. So, all these hanging plants put together, I think, create a very nice effect. And then, what else? We have here um, a Philodendron, a Daphnebachia. This Daphnebachia could be Daphnebachia Mary, I'm not very sure but I think it gives it a nice pop of brightness in a place that's rather dark and then let's see this is the Esmeral, Esmeral, Esmeral Dense I think we now try to turn our heads towards here what's in front of me oh can you see the gem that I am eyeing this is the gem that I am eyeing Sweat, sweat, sweat um, This is the Platycerium Ridleyi Now Platycerium Ridleyi I would say is for more the advanced grower Because they are not easy and I have killed quite a few I'm not proud to say that It's really special because of the, um, the, the I don't know what you call it These are the fronds and that, that one um, It's sometimes called I think the monkey's brain or monkey king i'm not sure but this is really gorgeous when um, it grows out you could see the old one that's here that's already brown and guys hidden among all these luscious leaves and ferns could you see there's actually a shower head so you could take your secret outdoor jungle shower right here like it's truly a rainforest how nice is that now I, I want to take you to the backyard where all the gems are But oh, look at this This is the um, Anthurium And it escaped my mind Desiree or something crossed with radicans I think And look at the 
Wow, generous amount of inflows. I hope he gets some plant babies soon. This is amazing condition and size. I love leaves that are bullate like these. Very, very deep impression and so cute. They remind me of hard rock apps. <laughs> now we slowly make our way back to the backyard that's filled with a lot of gems. But first, out here, this is the Anthurium velinarium, I believe. And the leaf here is pretty large. And it could get even bigger. I've seen one about, about more than one and a half feet long. And here I cannot resist talking again about this Anthurium vitchii. You could hardly see such huge specimens here anywhere. And what else do... Oh! Um, Alocasia watsoniana that's here. This one. This I believe is from the Borneo region. We are here very very rich with a collection of Alocasia species. This is Alocasia Jacqueline, I believe. Yeah, I'm so happy here. This is the label and I've got it right. <laughs> Jacqueline, also beautiful texture. If you could feel it, it feels like um, it's kind of hard and very, very beautifully patterned. Okay, then we see here, um, this is the Anturium Palladiflorum and I know this because there's a label here that says it <laughs> and when it's huge this is a beautiful long bore it will be really really long but it does take time and patience for that to happen and as we enter in here there's a nice collection of begonias begonia maculata masaniona um, the iron cross which is here and you can't see it quite well but there and these iron cross oh, that's heavy um, they are very easy to propagate um, a whole lot of begonias here and alocasias the name escaped me this is the alocasia mellow this is so beautiful originates from Borneo even Sarawak maybe this is slightly burnt, but otherwise, look at that beautiful texture on the leaf. Okay, and then let's move on. Ah, this is a very special begonia. Come and have a look, because um, I have not seen this around very much. This is kind of like the Soli Mutata, except that it's got the escargot pattern. So quite unique. I will be trying to look for this to add it to my collection. And that's Alocasia aslanii that's hiding there at the back. Okay, let's see what else. Ooh, Glorism. Philodendron Glorism. Now, as you know, there are so many, so many forms of the Glorism. We have the normal green one, then there's a dark form, white vein. Now, I think they have something called the tiger stripe. This one, I believe this is the dark form. And um, the veins are just really, really, really outstanding, really high contrast. And this one is slightly wavy. Um, some are more flat so this is a, a wavy one i'm not sure what the difference is and then we have raffirodora tetrasperma this i discovered lately is actually originates from borneo as well i think this is a normal form of glorism here this is the philodendron melanocrossum and this is so satisfying to look at because you could see how every single leaf has become larger and larger. So that means the owner is doing something right here. And guys, look at this, the Anthurium waraquinum. The length here, I estimate, is about two feet. This is really, really large. I rarely seen such a huge one. Also known as the Anthurium queen, if you're familiar. Then let's move on because there are just so many things to look at. Oh, maybe let's look at here. This is the um, another Anthurium and she's got the inflow too. I hope she'll be able to pollinate them. The name of this has escaped me. I think it's called Krista Hope or something. I can't remember. And this philodendron, I think this could be the philodendron mame or pastazanum silver. Um, 
I can't tell. It's got just splotches of these silvery things around it. Beautiful. Now let's move on to this one. You gotta come here for a nice angle. This is the Anthurium Regale and it has been really, really hot on everyone's wish list for a very long time. I have one and um, I can see she has quite a few here. Okay, let's move on. What else is special that I've not seen? Oh, this is a Peperomia. Uh, well, well, watermelon, I think the layman term is. Um, it's just so beautiful and cute. I think Peperomia now is not really a, a trendy plant to look at, but I feel like you should be eyeing plants that are not trendy because then usually they could be um, also cheaper. Because when we're chasing for the same plants at the same time with everyone, things get a lot more expensive. So Peperomia, a good, beautiful plant that is now, I think, underrated. And the begonia down here has really caught my eye. This one is also so cute. I'm wondering what the underneath looks like. All bright maroon red, so beautiful. I uh, hardly see this begonia too, and I'm not sure what the name is. If you do know, please leave a little comment and let me know. Okay, now let's come up. Now this is the backyard and let me get out of the way so you can see the view. We have here the ginger family plant. We call it Bunga Katan in Malaysia. Eli Tonga something. I will put the name here in the description. And then we have here also some wood, huge pieces of trunk and wood that has moss. Uh, growing all over it and it's so beautiful and natural it's got also some ferns growing naturally on it as well so guys if you do have a good quality hardwood that's lying around if you just could <laughs> scatter them all around your garden they do make beautiful hardscape on their own look at the natural beautiful moss that's just growing it's quite magical and now here I like to draw your eyes onto these vines. I'm not sure what they are called. Um, we have a layman term for that here and that's called the duck's web. And they're just so cute. They, they uh, kind of just branch out into two. I've got one at home that's purple color and this one is a uh, gray on green. Oh, another beautiful and I feel underrated plant is also the maiden hair fern. This for me, um, I feel that they do like it to be moist, high humidity and also good ventilation and good amount of light for them to thrive. A plant here just caught my eye and I want to raise and show it to you. I'm not sure what this is either and if you do know what it is, do let me know. Okay. Now let's proceed down to the deep and oh wait, before that, look at that enormous, enormous platycerium coronarium. I believe there's like at least three altogether here and there are attached hanging to a tree. So huge and magnificent. Um, this platycerium actually is originating from Malaysia. So for those who are in Malaysia, the good news is you can get this quite freely available and this should be the, the, the cheaper um, sort of coronarium. Like at least it is not imported and therefore the prices could be kept relatively low. Now let's come over to here. And this is the favorite part of the garden. Whoops, I'm uh, barefoot so I'm really careful. <laughs> Hope there's no creepy crawly. So here is a large driftwood and the owner has create, turned this driftwood into a beautiful piece of water feature. And you could see the water streaming down to it. And then this beautiful plants that just seems to creep so natural upon it. Really, really feeling like it's part of nature and not a man-made thing. So if you could find yourself a really huge piece of wood, uh, like a driftwood would be even better. This really hard and solid, um, what's the word for it? Durable piece of wood. This could be an idea for you. And to put creeping plants all around it. 
Here we are at a little corner with a huge fern tree. This is the fern tree and I have a thing for fern tree. They're just so beautiful and so gracious. But what's below the fern tree are the real jewels. You can see that there are a few alocasia. I believe this is the alocasia regina. And then this is a alocasia whose name I do not know. And that's the alocasia reversa. And even within this pot, I think there is a few different alocasias. Uh, this is from Borneo. And this alocasia here is uh, called the alocasia aquino. I think it has another name. And it originates, as you can guess by its name, uh, from the Philippines. And down here we have a few begonias. Oh, and here is a huge Alocasia Watsoniana. This reminds me of like a, the ribs of a skeleton. And right here we have the Alocasia Cupria, also native to Borneo. And this looks like a huge anthurium of sort that, whose name I do not know, but it's extremely rippled. And then we have here the uh, anthurium Morona. I happen to know the name of this because I have one. And this one here is a Monstera. It starts with L. I forgot how you pronounce it. I'm sorry, I'm so bad with names and the weather is so hot it makes me forget everything. And then down here below, this is I think a relatively new uh, philodendron that's come to the market. It's called the SP Columbia. So it is a uh, really very, very like like cheeks, you know, they're like so puffy and cute. I, I like this too. And I hear they can get very, very large, like the Pasazanam or the McDowell. So imagine when they're huge, they will look really, really good. Okay, now here we have more regale. And as you can see from here, um, I think there are many variations in regale. This one is the more highly, um, more veins. Whereas the one that is right next to it, this one, I believe this could be a hybrid of sort. But nonetheless, still very magnificent and really, really huge. This one here, I believe it's the Philodendron Nanga Ritense. Um, it's got a patio that's kind of rough. Not exactly fairy, but definitely kind of sandpaper-ish. And this one here, this is one of my favorite philodendron. This is the philodendron plamanii. I love it so much because of this incredible texture that it has. It has uh, the waves to it and this thing that kind of pops out, has everything. And actually the patio is quite remarkable too. If you could see, the patios are really wavy, kind of flat. So it's a real beauty too from behind. Okay, so this is the another Monstera Albo. But you guys would have seen a lot of this already. I don't need to talk more about it. This one is special because this Thai constellation is just so huge. So, so enormous. This is uh, another plant that I've killed a few, so let's not look at that anymore. Um, ah, another Glorism that's here. This leaf is kind of so gorgeous and perfect except a little bit torn at the bottom. This one I feel is more flat compared to the other one that I've seen. Let me just check underneath to see if it's the same plant. Uh, yeah, it's not the same plant. So you can see that even if these are dark form, some are more flattish looking like this is a flat one. And then let's take a look at the other one again that seems much more wavy in its form. Both are beautiful in their own ways. I had to come back because I discovered plants that I forgot to show you. This is the Philodendron Yopii. As you could see, it's starting to show its form. And then this is the ever so sexy luxurian um, Anthurium luxurian. And this one is pretty lush with quite a few leaves. Pretty good size too. 
This is my all-time favorite luxurian. I really live up to its name. And if you could see hidden right in the middle is the obligua, looking perfect and so lush. This plant that has yeah many many holes. Um, amazing collection. And this section here is for lovers of Colocasia. This is Colocasia white lava. It's got lovely, very prominent white veins. And here is a much uh, smaller leaf, but one that is in a very perfect condition. And then there is a jewel down there, which is the uh, Colocasia Faro. So this one is getting very popular these days and the prices are really, really quite something. Okay, now let's see. Ah, I think this is a Colocasia Mojito, a Skeleto Mojito. One that I could also say, I've had one before and it didn't do well under my hands. And I no longer have this one. But here, the one that truly caught my eye is the Colocasia Lime Gecko. This is huge and then he has a ton of them. So if you could just pan out that way your view. He has so many and they are doing so well. And let's see the condition that they're in. They are under bright, direct, 100% sunlight. So it looks like there are something that loves the sun, although they are quite flimsy to the touch. You might think they are fragile, but in fact, they love the sun. And now let's go in and see what they are potted in, so what potting media they're using. Okay, so looks like, to my shock, this Colocasia is planted in water, and it is doing so well in water, and so many babies. That's kind of amazing to me. Okay, that's it guys, we've come to the end of the tour and I hope you've enjoyed this tour as much as I have and picked up some good ideas. If you do like it, do remember to subscribe and share it with others. And so, I bid you farewell, goodbye, until my next video. Oh, I can wear back. Check, yeah, plan how many hours he